Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Recently, longtime subscriber John Middleton was kind enough to send me, well, loads of stuff. Honestly, you're probably going to be hearing his name quite a bit over the next few weeks. But one of the things he sent me, and the thing that's relevant for today's video, is this. Alien Fate of the Nostroma. This is a cooperative game for 1-5 to five players from Ravensburger, and being a huge fan of the Alien franchise, I'm really excited to have this in my collection. I'm particularly excited because this game plays very much like Horrified, which subscribers may know is one of my favourite co-op titles. In fact, Fate of the Nostroma plays almost like a scenario expansion for Horrified. The core gameplay is very similar, however they've layered in some additional resource management elements and a few jump scares. So in this video we're going to play through the game, pitting three crew members from the ill-fated Nostroma against the terrifying alien. Let's dive into the box. Ooh, jump scare. Here we have the board representing the Nostroma, and you can see that on the right hand side I have laid out three character sheets. For this playthrough we will be using Ripley, Dallas, and my favourite character from the movie, Parker. And we'll talk more about those characters and their special abilities in a moment. First things first, we need to prepare the board for our adventure. In this game, as strange as it may seem, there is no character elimination. Instead, you win or lose as a team, and the main way you can lose is if the crew morale runs out, and your morale is tracked on the board using the handy dandy tracker on the bottom left corner. Here's our tracker token. For a three player game, it will start on 15. And throughout the game, one of the most important things you're going to be doing is gathering scrap tokens to create different items like motion sensors, grappling guns, and incinerators. So at the start of the game, we have to place two scrap tokens on the garage, mother, the med bay, and the maintenance bay. Next, we have to place out a number of concealed tokens. These are placed in rooms, and if you enter a room, you reveal the concealed token. It's either going to be a surprise attack from the alien, a safe location, or a jump scare courtesy of Jonesy the cat. And we have to place concealed tokens face down at the garage, the workshop, and the maintenance bay. Next up, there are six coolant canisters scattered around the ship. We have to place one in the workshop, one in the garage, one in the maintenance bay, one in the equipment storage, one at mother, and one in hypersleep. Those coolant canisters are an important item. You need them for certain objectives. And you can also take them to the workshop to convert them into scrap. And of course, the scrap can then be used to make other items. The other items you can make are an electric prod, a flashlight, a grapple gun, a motion tracker, a cat carrier, or an incinerator. And you can have up to two of those created at any one time. Next, we have to figure out what our objectives are. There will be one objective for each character in play, plus an additional one, and then a final mission. You only reveal the final mission once you have completed all of your objectives. The objectives I have drawn at random from the deck are give it a little incentive, bring an electric prod to the galley. Where is it? Bring a flashlight to the med bay. Crew meeting. All crew members have to be in the galley with at least one scrap token each. And drive them into the airlock. Bring an incinerator to the airlock. Next, we need to shuffle the encounters deck. I have already done that. It's the deck of red cards in the bottom right corner of the screen. We then need to place this friendly fellow in the nest. And then we set up our crew in the galley. Ripley, who has a special ability that allows her to spend one action to move another crew member one space. She gets four actions per turn. Dallas, who doesn't get any special actions, but does get five actions per turn. And then my man Parker, who gets four actions per turn. And once per turn, he can spend one of his actions to draw a scrap token from the scrap pile and add it to his inventory. And that's it, we are set up ready to play. I'm going to avoid front loading the video with rules explanations. I will try to do that as we go. But the general concept should be familiar to anybody who has played cooperative board games, particularly Horrified. The way it works is you will activate your character, you get a number of actions specified on the character sheet, and then once you have spent your actions, you will draw an encounter card from the deck. The encounter card will specify how the alien moves and where other resources will appear on the ship. You can spend one of your actions to move, which means moving into an adjacent space. You can spend one of your actions to pick up or drop items, in which case you can either pick up or drop any number of scrap tokens, or pick up or drop one item. You can use an action to use or craft items, that is either using your special ability, using an item that you have in your possession, or spending scrap tokens to create an item. Finally, you can spend one of your actions to trade any number of items and scrap tokens with other crew members that you are sharing the space with. So as you can see, our aim is to run around the ship, gather up the scrap tokens and the canisters, 
complete the objectives, reveal the final mission, and then complete the final mission to win the day. Meanwhile, the alien is going to be running around, and every time he jumps out at us, our morale will go down. If our morale is ever at zero, we lose. Additionally, in certain final missions, there is a chance that the ship will blow up, in which case, we also lose. I think that's everything you need to know, so we can just get started. Oh, and one final thing to mention. I am very new to this game, and the rulebook for this game is a bit of a disaster. So while I hope I can give you a good idea of how the game plays, there may be a few mistakes along the way. Let's just hope none of my mistakes are as serious as Kane's mistake of sticking his face right in that egg. We begin by activating Ripley, and a quick look at our objectives reveals that we need to create an electric prod, a flashlight, and an incinerator. The incinerator requires four scrap, the flashlight requires two scrap, and an electric prod requires three scrap. But just by glancing at the board, I can see that we can very quickly achieve our first objective, where is it, where we have to bring a flashlight to the med bay. We just have to get Dallas into the med bay, where there is already some scrap tokens that he can use to make the flashlight. So first I'm going to use Ripley's special ability twice to move Dallas twice. Dallas is down in suit storage. And then she's going to use her special ability twice more, but this time on Parker, to move him into the bridge. That completes Ripley's turn, so we draw the top encounter card. We have drawn a quiet card. You can see our sneaky Xenomorph is peeking into the med bay. The way these cards are laid out, up in the top corner, that is how far the alien will move. In the top right corner is the morale loss if the alien should come into contact with a crew member. And then down at the bottom, we can see the number of scrap tokens that will appear at the med bay. And also, that little one means we have to place a concealment token at the med bay as well. That means our alien moves one space out of the nest. Two more scrap tokens appear at med bay, but unfortunately we also have to place a concealment token there. That completes the turn, so now we activate Dallas. Dallas gets five actions. We need to get him into the med bay. That could be a problem because we have to reveal a concealment token, but really there's no way to avoid that. So we spend our first three actions to move into the med bay. Because we have entered an area with a concealment token, we reveal that concealment token and the token is safe, there is nothing there. That's good news for us. That concealment token now gets shuffled back into the pile of concealment tokens, and Dallas can continue his turn. He's going to use his fourth action to pick up all of that scrap, and then he will immediately spend two scrap with his final action to build a flashlight. So we discard two scrap tokens, and we add this flashlight token to his board. Each character can carry up to three items like that, plus one coolant tank. And that flashlight is going to do two things. First of all, whenever Dallas has an encounter that will cause him to lose morale, we can reduce the morale loss by one. Additionally, because we now have a flashlight and we are in the med bay with it, we can complete one of our objectives. Where is it? So we flip that objective face down. We are already a quarter of the way towards revealing our final mission. That completes all of Dallas's five activations, so it is time to draw another encounter card. The alien is hunting, it moves two spaces, and look at that morale loss if it comes into contact with someone. Ouch. The alien always has to move towards the closest crew member, and you have to remember there are two ladders here. There is a ladder in the equipment storage area, which connects to the suit storage area up there. And there is also a ladder in the maintenance bay, which connects to the docking bay. Ripley is actually the closest crew member to the alien at the moment, so we have to advance towards her by the shortest route possible. Going via either ladder requires the same amount of movement to get to her, so we get to pick. We're going to move our alien towards equipment storage. And that completes Dallas's turn. It's time for Parker to activate. He's going to use his first two actions to move to Mother, and then he's going to use one action to pick up the two scrap, and another action to pick up the coolant. And that all goes on his character board. His turn is over, we draw an encounter card. It's an alien stalk card. The alien will advance three spaces. That's getting scary now. As we know, the alien is stalking Ripley, so it will advance into the equipment storage chamber, up through suit storage and into the corridor just outside the galley. Fortunately, it's now Ripley's turn, and I think she has to run away, really. Best thing for her to do would be to head through docking bay and go down into maintenance where she can collect all of those scrap tokens and things. That will cost three actions to get there. Of course, she has entered a room with a concealed token, so we have to reveal that token. We are safe for now. 
and then I'm going to use her last activation to pick up those two scrap tokens. It's time for an encounter card. Order 937, meet in the infirmary. The active crew member moves to the med bay. If Ash is in the ship and no crew member is with him, move him two spaces. Ash is a way of increasing the difficulty of the game. I left him out for this playthrough because it was an extra layer of complications that I didn't want to deal with on camera. So Ripley is our active crew member. She gets moved directly to med bay to meet up with Dallas. While I'm not really that keen on Ripley being moved to medbay at the moment, it's away from all of the things I need to collect, at least the alien doesn't move. Having completed Ripley's encounter phase, it's time to activate Dallas. Dallas, being the heroic captain that he is, is going to try to lure the alien away from Parker, because we do not want Parker to get stuck up in the top corner. Furthermore, we really want the alien to move away from the galley, because one of our objectives is for everyone to meet at the galley with scrap tokens. So Dallas is going to use four of his actions to sneak through suit storage down into equipment storage. And with his final action, he is going to claim the coolant canister, which goes onto his character board. Remember, Dallas has the flashlight, which allows him to reduce the amount of morale damage he takes. So really, of all the characters on the board at the moment, I would rather the alien attacked him. Speaking of which, it's time to draw an encounter card. Order 937, crew expendable. The active crew member loses all scrap tokens. Then shuffle all Order 937 encounter cards back into the encounter deck. That's horrible. That's two scrap tokens I've lost. First we remove the tokens from Dallas's board, and then these two cards get shuffled back into the encounter deck. Boo to that. But I guess at least the alien didn't attack us. And it's now Parker's turn. Parker, being stuck in the corner there with the alien breathing down his neck, thinks it might be time to craft himself a weapon. We're going to use our first action to use his special ability, which allows us to take one scrap token from the token pile. That gives us three scrap in total. Unfortunately, we need four to build an incinerator, which is what we really want. But at least with three, we can build the electric prod. That means we discard all three of our scrap tokens and we add the electric prod token to our character sheet. The electric prod is going to do two things for us. First of all, if we can get it to the galley, we will complete the objective, give it a little incentive. More importantly, if we encounter the alien at any point, we can use the electric prod to reduce the amount of morale damage we take by two. After two uses, it's discarded, but of course you can use scrap tokens to build it again. I have two actions left and we are going to be brave. We are going to advance into the bridge. Parker's turn is over, so we draw an encounter card. The alien stalks. It's going to move three spaces towards the closest crew member. The closest crew member happens to be Dallas. So the alien is going to sneak through suit storage down into equipment storage. Dallas, get out of there. The card states that anybody that encounters the alien on this turn will take three morale damage. However, we do have the flashlight, which reduces the morale damage by one. So we lose two morale here. We are down to 13. Furthermore, as you might expect, Dallas is having a brown trousers moment. He has to run away. He has to move exactly three spaces. Beyond those restrictions, we get to pick where he goes. So we could run up into the galley, which would have been okay if we had some scrap, but we don't. Furthermore, we really want the alien to move away from us a little bit. So instead, we are going to run further into the sub deck. We're going to head towards the garage. And now it's time for Ripley to activate. And Ripley is going to use two actions to move out of the med bay. She's going to use a third action to use one scrap token to create a cat carrier. We discard one scrap token and we add the cat carrier to Ripley's player board. The cat carrier really isn't the most useful item, but it does a couple of things. If at any point Ripley gets a jump scare from Jonesy the cat, she can capture Jonesy and that will prevent Jonesy from running around the ship and causing more problems. Furthermore, some of the final missions require a cat carrier to complete. So by building one now, while we have the opportunity, it just means we're prepared. Ripley has one action left. She is going to use it to move Dallas into the garage and we reveal the concealment token. We're lucky, it's safe again. Ripley is out of actions, so it's time to draw an encounter card. Order 937, each crew loses one scrap. Fortunately, only Ripley has a token at the moment, but that does mean we don't have a single scrap of scrap between the whole crew. Time for Dallas to activate. 
He is going to spend his first action to pick up the two scrap tokens, and then he's going to run away. He's got four actions left, so he can head up through maintenance, trying to get back towards the galley. And of course, we draw an encounter card. Everything is quiet. The alien moves one space, and we place two scrap tokens at the airlock. The alien, of course, has to move towards the closest crew member, and both Ripley and Dallas are equally close. So we are going to head towards Dallas, which means we head through the subdeck. Creepy, creepy, creepy. And of course, we put two scrap tokens on the airlock, along with another concealment token. With that done, it's Parker's turn. And Parker is going to spend one action to claim a scrap token from the scrap pile, and then he is going to advance into the galley. Because Parker is armed with an electric prod and he has entered the galley, we can complete the objective, give it a little incentive. And I should point out with those objectives, you don't need to use or drop the item there, you just need to be in that space with the item. And that means we actually have one action left, but I don't really have anything to do with it. I need to stay there to complete my objective crew meeting. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to do that once I've activated Ripley and Dallas. So I'm just going to stay there. It's a waste of an action, but what can I do? It's time to draw an encounter card. Lost signal. Return the alien to the nest. Place a concealed token in each room where no crew members or concealed tokens are present. Shuffle all alien encounter cards back into the encounter deck. That is horrible. First, the alien returns to the nest. We now have to put out loads of concealed tokens. One in each room where there isn't a crew member. That effectively means the alien can pop up pretty much anywhere. And we also have to shuffle these cards back into the encounter deck. It's now Ripley's turn. She has four actions. And I'm hoping I can complete the crew meeting objective on Dallas's turn. So I'm going to move one space into Dallas's room. I'm going to use the trade action to take one of his scrap tokens. And I think I might also give him the cat carrier. All of that trading costs just one action. So I still have two actions left. I'm going to use those to enter the galley. Let's hope we don't get a bad encounter card and Dallas is able to join us on his turn. And we have drawn a good card. It is quiet. The alien will move one space and we will place two scrap tokens and a concealment token at Mother. The alien sneaks back out of the nest. Two scrap tokens go to Mother and Mother already has a concealment token. You can never have more than one concealment token at a location so we don't have to do anything else. We move on to Dallas's turn. Of course, Dallas is going to spend two actions to move to the galley. I have three crew at the galley, each with one scrap token, which means our crew meeting objective has been completed. With his third action, Dallas is going to take that scrap token back from Ripley. And then with his last two actions, he's going to move to the docking bay. We are going to hopefully get down to the airlock next turn, flame that with the incinerator, and then we can move on to the final mission. Time for an encounter card. It's another quiet card. The alien advances one space, we place three scrap at the garage and one concealment token. The alien creeps closer towards Dallas. And we place three scrap at the garage. Again, we don't need to place a concealment token. There's already one there. It is now Parker's turn. Parker's going to spend one action to gather some scrap from the scrap pile, giving him two total. For his second action, he's going to give all of his scrap to Ripley. And then with his final two actions, he's going to head to the bridge. We have to reveal that concealment token. Fingers crossed. Surprise attack, it's the alien. Bad things are about to happen. First things first, the alien leaps across the board to the bridge. Next, Parker takes one morale damage. I could flip my electric prod to reduce that damage to zero, but I would rather save that. So for now, I will just take the one point. And now Parker has to run three spaces, which is going to send him back through the galley. He is noping out. We will head down towards suit storage, I think. Now, when you reveal a surprise attack like that, once you have resolved the effects, your turn is immediately over, even if you have actions left. Furthermore, you do not draw an encounter card, which means we go straight on to Ripley's turn. Ripley is going to use her two scrap to build a flashlight. This is our second flashlight token. Dallas has the other one. That means nobody else can build a flashlight. Next, we're going to move one space towards Dallas, quietly backing away from that alien. And then I'm going to use my last two actions to move Dallas into the airlock. And we're going to cross our fingers and hope that the concealment token there isn't too bad. 
Dallas creeps into the airlock. Sighs of relief all round, it's safe. But it's now the encounter phase. Bad news, the alien is stalking, it moves three space and it will inflict three morale damage. Our alien has a choice of two delicious targets. It can go to Ripley or Parker. Parker has an electric prod and therefore is able to soak two morale damage while Ripley only has a flashlight which can soak one. So I think the obvious thing to do is to move the alien into Parker's location and use our prod. The alien moves, we flip the token on Parker's board and even so we still take one morale damage. It's fine, it's not a problem, we're doing really well. Because it's now time for Dallas to activate. He's going to spend one action to pick up the two scrap tokens in his location. He is then going to spend all four of those tokens to build an incinerator. We place an incinerator token on Dallas's board. He is now fully kitted out. And once again, that incinerator can do two things for us. First of all, because Dallas has an incinerator in the airlock, we can complete our fourth and final objective, drive him into the airlock. Furthermore, the incinerator is a two-use item. On our turn, we can spend an action to use the incinerator, and if the alien is within three spaces of us, we send it directly back to the nest. Oh, and by the way, before we continue, eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that after the alien attacked Parker, Parker, even though he used his prod, still has to run away three spaces. I think the best thing for me to do would be to run back through the galley and up towards Mother where there's some more scrap tokens. That little interlude aside, back to business. Dallas still has three actions left, but because we have completed all four of our objectives, before we continue our turn, we have to reveal the final mission. There are five of these in total. We will take the one from the top. We have found cut off every bulkhead and every vent. The setup for this card says, place a concealed token on each room that does not have one. Ignore any future effect that instructs you to place a concealed token in a room. Let's get that done first. Now the way concealed tokens work is you only reveal them when you move into a room that contains one. If you are already in the room when the concealment token is placed, it stays face down. Next up, the setup states that the active crew member must take the self-destruct tracker and place the four countdown tokens on it. This is our self-destruct sequence board and we have four tokens that we will place over the top of the board like this. And what will happen is each time Dallas activates, we will remove one of the four tokens from the board. If it gets round to Dallas's activation and there are no tokens left to remove, boom, the ship goes up and anybody on board is dead. I'm going to pop it there on top of the morale track. Hopefully I will remember to remove one token each time Dallas activates. So the self-destruct sequence has been initiated. How do we win? We will win if we can clear all of the concealed tokens from the board. There are 13 concealed tokens. Right, let's do this. We have three actions left with Dallas. We cannot reveal the token that we are in the room with. So we will head out towards the docking bay. That will be two actions. And then we reveal the concealment token at the docking bay. It is safe. One down, 12 to go, and I have a single action left. And at this moment, I think the best thing I can do is attack the alien with my incinerator. I am within three spaces of it, so I can spend my final action to send it back to the nest. That will just give me a little bit of breathing space. So first we turn our incinerator token face down to show it only has one use left, and then the alien goes back to the nest. And unfortunately, we still draw an encounter card. We have drawn quiet. The alien moves one space, and we will place two scrap tokens at the docking bay. The alien didn't stay in the nest for long. Fortunately, scrap has appeared out of nowhere, right at our feet. Next up, Parker will activate, and we are going to use our first action to gain a scrap token, because really we want to build some motion detectors. Motion detectors are really, really good for revealing concealment tokens, because you can reveal them without stepping into the space. And I should point out, on all of the reference cards, it says that motion detectors cost two scrap to build. However, in the rules book, it states that it costs three scrap. And I'm inclined to believe it's supposed to be three because the motion detector is a really, really powerful item. Anyway, I've got three actions left. I'm going to use two of them to move to mother. And of course, that means I have to reveal the concealed token. We are safe. And that means I can continue my turn and use my last action to claim those two scrap tokens. Next turn, I can build myself a motion tracker. 
Unfortunately, right now, I have to draw an encounter card. Oh, it's bad news bears. The alien is stalking. It is going to attack Dallas. It moves three. It will inflict three morale damage. So first it scurries up through maintenance into the docking bay. Dallas takes three morale damage, but it is reduced by one because of his flashlight. So it goes down by two. And now Dallas has to run away. He has to go in a direction that means he moves the full three spaces. But we can be just a little bit gamey here because if we run into any locations that have concealed tokens, we have to stop and reveal those. This can set off a horrible chain reaction where the alien keeps jumping out at you, but it can also help to clear the board of tokens. So Dallas is going to escape by going down the ladder. We all know going down ladders works really well for Dallas. So that's one move down into maintenance. Normally he would have to run an additional two spaces, but at the moment he stops and we reveal that concealed token. And we have found Jonesy the cat. Normally, this jump scare would inflict one morale on us, but we do have the flashlight, which reduces the damage by one, so we don't take any morale damage here. Furthermore, we get to catch Jonesy and put him in our cat carrier. Having resolved that concealed token, we continue running. We have another two spaces to move. It makes sense to run into the workshop, where we will reveal another concealed token. What's it going to be this time? It's safe, which means we can stop running for now. For those of you keeping score, we've revealed four tokens so far. Phew, after all that drama, I've almost forgotten what I'm doing. Um, Dallas ran away because of an encounter on Parker's turn, so it's Ripley's turn to activate, and uh, I guess she just needs to move away from the alien. She will reveal a concealed token. Let's hope it's nothing bad. That's one action to move into the galley. Ah, before I reveal that concealed token, I need to think about this. If it's an alien attack, that's the end of my turn and I will lose three actions. So I need to be careful here. I need to think a little bit more carefully than that. Let's retrace our steps. Before we move to the galley, we are going to spend three actions to move Dallas. Dallas is in the workshop. He doesn't want to be in the workshop. He needs to get out and explore these other sub deck locations. So we're going to spend three actions to get him down into the lower sub deck corridor. And now Ripley is going to use her fourth action to move into the location with the concealed token. We enter the galley and we flip the token. And sometimes it pays to stop, think and retrace your steps because we have indeed encountered the alien. First of all, the alien jumps to our location. Next, we take one point of morale damage. However, we do have the flashlight, which reduces damage by one, so we're fine. But now we do have to run. And I think in this case, the best thing we can do is run back towards hypersleep. It's getting tense now. The alien is everywhere. Fortunately, we had a surprise attack, so we do not draw an encounter card. And it's time to activate Dallas. The first thing we do is remove the first token from our countdown board. Next, Dallas is going to head into the nest. That's two actions to get there. We reveal the concealed token, and sometimes the scariest places are the safest. This is currently a safe location. That also means we can continue our turn. We have three more actions, so we're going to head towards the garage. I think we're still doing okay, but we have to draw an encounter card. The alien is hunting. It will move two spaces towards the closest crew member. The closest crew member is Ripley, so our alien will slink into the docking bay. And now it's time for Parker to do his thing. The first thing he's going to do is spend three scrap tokens to build the motion tracker. We discard the three tokens from his board and we add the motion tracker to his board. This has unlimited uses. And because there is a concealed token two spaces away in the bridge, we're going to use our second action to use the motion tracker to reveal that token. Safe. We have two actions left, so of course we're going to move into the bridge. Things are still going well, but we draw another encounter card. The alien stalks, it's going to attack Ripley. First, the alien moves into Ripley's location. Next, Ripley will take three points of morale damage. We reduce that by one for the flashlight. We still take two. We have to run three spaces, so we may as well run into the airlock. It will give us an opportunity to reveal another concealed token. This has the potential to set off one of those chain reactions where the alien hunts us down. But let's go for it. We reveal the token. Fortunately, we are safe. And now it's Ripley's turn. I think we're going to move two spaces up into the docking bay. We will use our third action to claim the two scrap. Yes, I am aware there is an alien right there, but I'm kind of hoping we might get the alien out of our face because for our next action, we're going to move Dallas. We're going to move Dallas into the garage. 
if Dallas gets surprised, the alien will launch down to the garage, clearing the way to the hypersleep location. So we move Dallas. We reveal the concealed token. And it is a surprise attack, and it's a big one. First things first, the alien moves down to the garage. Second, we take that morale hit. It is reduced by one for our flashlight, but we still take two. And then we have to run, and obviously we're going to run towards the equipment storage room and that next concealed token. And now we have an interesting situation. It was Ripley's turn. Ripley used her action to move Dallas. Dallas revealed a surprise token. Normally, when you reveal a surprise token, it immediately ends your turn. Furthermore, you do not draw an encounter card. Ripley wasn't the one that revealed the concealed token, it was Dallas. But looking at the wording in the rules, it says if you reveal a concealed token and it's a surprise attack, the current player's turn ends, skip the encounter phase. So I have to play by that wording, even though it wasn't Ripley that revealed the token, it's the end of Ripley's turn and we do not draw an encounter. And that means we go straight to Dallas's phase. And that means we lose another token from the self-destruct board. We're almost out of morale. The ship is almost blown up. We have to go for it, really. Dallas is going to walk into the equipment storage room. He has no scrap tokens. He can't build anything. He just has to go for it. So one action to move one space. We reveal the token. And we are safe. I know there are still some tokens that have alien reveals, but I don't know how much damage they do. I'm just going to risk it. I'm going to climb from equipment storage up to suit storage. This is our second action. We reveal the token. It's a Jonesy the Cat token. Normally this would inflict one morale, but we already have Jonesy the Cat in our cat carrier, so this is treated as a safe location. Regardless, even if we didn't already have Jonesy in the cat carrier, we have a flashlight and the damage would have been negated anyway. Okay, we still have three actions left. I don't really want to risk revealing any more tokens this way. I do have a sneaky suspicion that both of the remaining tokens are going to be alien tokens. So I'm just going to move up to the galley and sit there and wait quietly. In fact, I've got one more move. So I'm going to move into the passageway by the bridge, I think. And that does mean we need to draw an encounter card. We have order 937 collating data. Each crew loses one scrap. I don't care. Ripley's the only crew member with scrap, she loses one. It is now Parker's turn. The plan is, he's just going to run over to Ripley. On Ripley's turn, she's going to take the motion detector and hopefully reveal the final two tokens. Let's see if that works out for us. That took all four of my actions to get there, so our turn is over and we draw an encounter card. Order 937, crew expendable. The active crew member loses all scrap tokens, shuffle all Order 937 encounter cards back into the encounter deck. These three cards go back in the deck. I don't think it's going to be a major problem at this point. It's Ripley's turn, and in true fashion, I think it's going to be Ripley who saves the day for us. She's going to spend her first action to take the motion tracker from Parker. If you remember, the motion tracker allows us to reveal a concealed token up to two spaces away, so we can now use our second action to reveal the concealed token in the hypersleep room. And it's a safe location. We have two actions left, so we move one space south. We are now within two spaces of the med bay, so we use our final action to reveal that token. And it is the alien. When you reveal the alien with a motion tracker, you immediately move the alien to that location and then you gain one action. We don't really need that one action, but we may as well use it. We're gonna go and rejoin Parker. And that, I believe, is a win. I think as soon as you meet the conditions of the final mission, it's game over. You don't need to play to the end of your turn or anything like that. It's just an immediate win. Just out of interest, let's see what our final encounter would have been. The alien would have hunted us two spaces. That means the alien would have been in the corridor right next to us, breathing down our necks, but it wouldn't have made any difference. It's a win anyway. And that is that. It got a little bit tense towards the end, but overall, I think things went pretty well for us. Certainly a little better than they did in the movie. But that is Alien Fate of the Nostroma. I really like this. It has a rule book, which is a complete mess. Some of the components are a bit fiddly to use. The concealed tokens have to be constantly shuffled and shuffling a deck of 13 tokens that are that size isn't easy when you don't want to reveal what's on the bottom of them. But overall, I think it's nice and thematic, even though there is no player elimination, which may seem a little bit weird. I think they've handled it nicely, the way morale works, so that you lose as a team and nobody is left sitting out watching the game play out without them. 
There's quite a few different mini objectives to complete, which basically boil down to getting an item and moving it to a certain location. And there are five final missions which all play out differently. Sometimes you have to battle Ash, sometimes you have to blow the alien out of the airlock, sometimes you just need to escape. So overall, I think they have captured the feel of the movie really, really well. The artwork is nice, I love the board. And I think it's simple and accessible enough to play with the family, even though the theme is a little bit gritty and may swing the pendulum away from family night game fun. But yeah, I like it. It's not as good as Horrified. It doesn't have the variability of Horrified and it's not quite as slick. And as I mentioned, the rulebook does let it down quite a bit. But this is a good one. I like this a lot. So thank you once again to John Middleton for sending this into the channel. I really do appreciate it. But that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.